So not too long ago, I made a video about a cheap pro mini that was sent to me by somebody that was trying to replicate the same sleep current I had shown in a video I made a long time ago on low power design for the AT Mega 328. And um, in that video, I actually pulled the chip off of that Pro Mini board. I put it on another board, tested everything apples to apples. I even put a special order into DigiKey to get a 2020 date code uh, AT Mega, tested everything out, and it turned out that just something was wrong with that chip. So I had just immediately thought that it was counterfeit. And in the comments for that video, there's a lot of people suggesting that maybe it was a gray market uh, chip that had failed the wafer sort or something like that. So then I thought, you know, maybe it would be cool to send this part to a company I had worked with in the past called Sensible Micro. And I thought it would be cool to send it to them based on another experience I had recently where I was involved in a massive redesign of a product where um, the whole point of the redesign was because one component had gone obsolete on the board and uh, there was a last time buy, just, there was, the part was just no longer available, they had scoured the world, they couldn't find it, and I just, you know, reached out to uh, Sensible Micro, and they saved the day. The next day, they located a massive inventory of the part. I had talked to the customer about it, and they were like, that's impossible, must be uh, black market counterfeit chips. Well, Sensible Micro, one of their specialties is also analyzing the chips and guaranteeing that they're authentic. So they put them through a full gauntlet of testing and, you know, they prove that it's genuine, authentic parts. Um, so why not send them this same chip here and see what they have to say about it? So that's what I did and they got back to me and I think the results were very, very interesting. Take a look. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Torioni. I am president and co-founder of Sensible Micro Corporation, and i um, excited to work on this project with Kevin and bring some information to you guys. We are based out of Tampa, Florida. The name of the company is Sensible Micro, and we're a distributor and global sourcing partner for electronic components. So we deal with a lot of OEMs, a lot of contract manufacturers, um, companies who have supply chain issues, obsolescence issues, lead time issues, things like that. And uh, it's interesting to read some of the comments on uh, Kevin's channel here, but you know, things that the engineering community is obviously having issues too uh, as well, which is finding good parts from time to time. So Kevin told me about this Atmel device that they were getting failures on and he was looking into. Uh, we've worked together in the past on some things and knew we had uh, a great capability to interrogate the chip further. Uh, we were excited to do that. So. What you're looking at here is our standard report that we do for customers uh, when we need to confirm if that part is authentic or not. Um, you know, it all starts with external visual inspection. We're looking at uh, any characteristics that the chip may have that would cause red flag. Um, the chip on the left here is the known good. The chip on the right is the, uh, the suspect. And you can see, really, the one on the right, and it's been pulled from a board, but if these were ordered new, they certainly wouldn't have solder on the leads. Um, noticing a little bit with the pin one orientation, the mold cavity is just not that clear with the one on the right. The part marking is not as um, clear as the one on the left. Now, that could be the lighting from our scope. But from what I can see on it, it still just doesn't look as consistent, the laser etching. So, you know, small anomalies to look at and, you know, make you scratch your head, but nothing right off the bat that would go, oh, these are, these are definitely fraudulent chips. So we start with external visual, looking at the dimensionals, making sure that they are indeed matching what the OCM spec, uh, data sheet spec documentation sees. Looking at the bottom of the chip, you can see the mold cavities there. The one on the left, again, very clean and um, you know sharp indentations into the actual body of the component. The one on the right, I know that it's a pull, but even the the mold cavities just look they just don't look formed very well. Um, so you know again, something that is uh, just not consistent. The photo all the way to the right, you can see that there's like an abrasion on the top of the device, and that's from our inspectors doing a, 
just a quick exacto knife across the top of the surface seeing if there's any flaking or black top coating that comes off that would show that the part's been remarked um, there's a destructive analysis test that we do in-house as well that is um, uh, called the heated solvents test and that'll break down that top layer of epoxy we'll put that back under the microscope and look at it as well to see if there's any remarkings or tamperings going on the, the guys didn't do that here they went uh, uh, straight to, that's the dimensionals, straight to x-ray analysis. Uh, so you can see right off the bat, oops, there's a uh, major difference here in that die size. Um, the, the die frame is not consistent. The one on the left is the known good again, and you can see that's just a square die. Um, the one on the right, is turned slightly and the die frame surround, surrounding it is different as well. You can see there's some indentations in that die frame that are just not consistent. Um, and then the die itself is just smaller. It's turned, it's smaller. That's an issue. Now I know these aren't from the same homogeneous lot. Um, you know, there certainly could be die revisions and things like that that occurred so you could have different sizes but um, you know, right off the bat, our inspectors would flag these and go, hey, something's going on. These, these dies, uh, the size and locations are off. If we were taking a lot of parts, like we've only had two samples in this case to examine, but if we had like 500 or 1,000 units, our machine would actually take that known good die and map it against the rest of the lot and, uh, and to make sure there's no inconsistencies found there. Our next stage is going straight to our decap machine. It's a chemical decapsulation. It's called a Nicene Jet Etch system, which we've had since 2012. Um, and you can see the, the, the known good and the suspect in the one shot photo there on the left. So this chemically removes the top of the chip. It exposes that internal dye wafer. Um, and again, you can just see those dyes are not consistent. The suspect is turned. Um, obviously, different configurations that we're looking at when we go back under a microscope. But the biggest telltale sign is the lithography of that wafer dye. And we blow these images up. You can see the known good here. We're looking for that Atmel logo or some sort of mask or series number on the chip that points back to that exterior part marking. And we've got it right there, Atmel logo. Known good sample. We do it for the suspect sample, and what do we find? Manufacturer I've never heard of, Aries, and it looks like another name listed above it. The logo looks like, um, I guess that's supposed to be the constellation Aries. <laughs> so um, definitely not Atmel, definitely not Atmel dye. I don't know of any mergers or acquisitions between Atmel and Aries where they would have packaged using Aries dye. Um, we're not the manufacturer, so we can't call something counterfeit because we don't have the IP to do that. Only they can do that, but we can definitely call them suspect counterfeit. Uh, you know, there's there's no reason why this die should be in that part, an exterior marked with that at mega part number. So, very interesting project. You know, um, it, it can be scary out there when you're doing your sourcing. So make sure you're aligning yourself with somebody that's reputable and knows what they're doing. I know in the engineering community, do-it-yourself projects, it's probably not always feasible to do that and. You know, some of these older chips that you're trying to do, you know, some fun projects at home with eBay and other online stores is just your only avenue. So uh, anyways, best of luck to everybody. And thanks, Kevin, for having us on. Take care.